Hi everybody, my name is Jessica Holyfield. I'm a professional dancer, professional dance choreographer, and dance educator based out of the southeast of the United States. And we're going to be taking a look at some episode 3 excerpts from Street Dance China. Now, um, I have been reacting to the full episodes of this season in particular, so if you end up missing any performances or battles or auditions, on YouTube, they will be on Patreon. Copyright has not been kind to me for this particular season and I've been troubleshooting every week trying to find the most efficient way to get these uploaded onto YouTube. So do forgive me if you are one per if you're somebody on YouTube that really wanted to see more of these. I apologize, blame YouTube. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna check it out. I really like the speed changes of the track itself. I think that's fun. It matches him brilliantly. And I like that their own their own people can't like are also prepared for it. <laughs> Yo That's right, some of them it's their first time really seeing Sala and his element. Ding, we've already kind of seen it already. That was really nice. So that's a great example of, with your style, being able to choreograph or, and really incorporate your music. It's still, as y'all can tell, like, <laughs> I'm still a little bothered by that first situation that's happened. Y'all, if, if y'all just let me know if I'm over, I, I could be overreacting, could be sensitive, I don't know. But anyway, my, my point on all this, though, is that I just... <sighs> out of all the shows that I've reacted to, and at this point it's been a couple seasons deep with, with the Street Fighter series and then with here, um, I really haven't, honestly, this may have been, this is what, this is honestly one reason why I think I really tried to steer clear from reacting to the full episodes of Street Woman and Street Man Fighter. <laughs> and it is because of when situations like that happen. And, it, it it does bother me a lot because there's a level of I when I when there's not a when there's not a valid enough justifiable reason for someone to make the choice that they made, but that's what's gonna be projected as that is the truth and people who may be more in the general public, they uh they are what's the word? I don't know. I feel I I'm just it, it does take me a little longer to work through when situations like that happen than whenever it's equally matched and it's just a preferential thing, obviously. Or whenever there's something that obviously was wrong that was taking place. It's little things like that that I think are really hard for me to navigate in real time. <laughs> Normally I'm fine after a little bit, but but it does affect how, how uh, more of a cynic I can be. You know, let me also say this is a side note. Personally, I feel that those who are representing um, their their team, I don't feel like the captain should have a right to vote for that. Personally, I think it should be everybody else gets to vote. And because it's a, it's a it's nepotism, 
right you know what i mean like and it, great examples nicking with jay park like jay there's no way jay wasn't going to vote for his own guy there's no way that uh venice was wasn't going to vote for his his guy you know so i feel like it's just kind of anyway having sala coming here to sala I love this how he sets this up. Very much like a, a video game character. It's fun for him to have his sunglasses on. Just that really quick glitch effect that he did in the lower half of his body was really cool. With his isolation. So we're seeing a lot of Sala, what makes Sala Sala. So I would say my something that I would heed caution to Sala if any of what I said actually matters to these people. Um, which is totally fine. I mean, it's just nice I get to just hang out with y'all and have these discussions. Uh, if, if what I said actually mattered to Salah, I would heed caution to a lot of his signature moves being used as often and as early. You know, I think hopefully we'll, we're able to see him for a long time and we'll be able to see him kind of go and navigate through, uh, the different, oh, ways of the show with groups, you know, not working by himself, but with others. So I am very curious to see how he grows as an artist. I love how he goes and uses his head as a fixed point to kind of catch in the air while everything else just kind of hinges out. Walks through, still with the head ISO. He sets it up, robot style. I love it with the roll, with the roll here. Yeah, I really very much like how we set that up. Definitely within the font for sure. But then I love that it speeds up and it's like nothing ever happened, you know? That we've already seen in a battle. That, man, I hadn't seen that since 2006. That was wonderful. He took it off. Freaking out a little bit. It's really fast. He just got to do a little, yeah, it's strutting a little bit. Love it. Yeah, he's like, mm. Just seeing all that, using the trumpet to, to instigate with the ch uh, it, into the body roll up. Love how he, he uses his face, really enjoys, brings it around, kicks around the back, vibes it through, super fun. Back, kicks it back up. Yeah, da 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 da. Very nice hat trick, back to normal. Hits it, brings it around, and it starts to get slower. Puts it in, he grabs his hat. He's mouthing the words. Really great, super fun. Grabbing the resistance, how seamless it is for him to go down. You know, the thing that's really one of the only speed changes that he does that that is out of the slow motion the techniques that he's doing. I love that with the, with the glide work here. It's a gorgeous, just a slide and that illusion. I would call that more of an illusionary work right there. He waves it up, super fun, brings it back. Ugh. Arms wave and he brings it back to normal. Pulls himself back. You notice how everybody freaks out. Ding enjoys it, but he's already seen it during the audition. It was so really nice. Great abdominal wave. He puts right back in there. Fashion, sir. Love it. Back to the Z set. Placing it out. And then he finishes nice and tastefully. Really nice. I will say this is very strategic on Sala's part because if you're going to battle onto his music, it's got speed changes. <laughs> it's got, honestly, I think he really set himself up with as much success as possible because who can call out that in the music isolated? You know, I felt like with Nagin's best case scenario in that whole situation is no one should have called out Nagin. And that would have been no problem. Like I would have, I because I wouldn't have called him out because he's really justified himself in so many other facets of the show. I don't feel like this one entity of a challenge should really knock people out, but I know they have to make people leave, so I get that. So I don't think it was the right call for him to call out Nagin because it is operating. He would be operating at a my major deficit, you know, because Nagin would have technically passed if the guy who had seen. People already had seen Nagin. For me, I wouldn't have raised my hand, though. You know, uh, because, yeah, anyway. But that was really, that was really nice. So I, I would assume for this one, because this is what I was wanting from Nagin. I wanted, I wanted something like this, where he took his, he took his style and took his technique and really, he didn't, he didn't, you don't have to tell a story with it, but you have to be, you have to just like, you respect the technique, respect the music that comes with it. Or and the music doesn't really come with the style that he was doing. And so he had to operate and he had to work harder to meet in the middle with the music. I don't feel like he did 100%. As you can tell, like we're, 
we're still, I'm still, I'm still bringing it up because it just bothered me. That part really bothered me. <sighs> okay. Anyway, I have a feeling with, with, with these guys, they'll probably all give him a pass. I would give Salah a pass for this because choreo on a choreographic standpoint, the musicality was, was really defined really well. Demonstration of multiple genres and styles showcases vocabulary. Well, I did promote my suggestion of whatever techniques are deemed his to, um, I would say he does a good job of integrating them to different parts of the music, which is really good, but varying up the way, well, how he gets in and out of it is also different just how that fundamental move showcases you know whenever he's here uh just figuring out a different way to not just do that to do something to either polyrhythmicize it or to dynamify it uh in some way shape or form you know but also at the end of the day the fact that he has multiple moves on his roster is already very inspiring for me to even be in a position to even want to give him a suggestion like that it's it's very I, I understand my, my youthness in understanding the depth of training that that man has done. And so it's, it's something, it's a, you can respect people all day long and people are world level, but it doesn't mean that everybody's perfect. Salah is not perfect. Neither is Nagin. Neither is, neither is, um, my guy who did the call up. No one's perfect. Not a single judge is perfect. So I think it's absolutely okay for us to be able to provide suggestion for people who are already really good at their craft because when you think about it, um, the higher and more elite a group or an individual becomes, the harder it is for them to actually find constructive feedback to help refine what they're given. And, and I do notice that whenever, uh, I provide feedback or I provided feedback whenever I did, um, USA qualifiers, that was honestly my favorite part was being able to help crews that normally don't get a lot of constructive feedback, actually ways to help them with their scores for, for the next time we see them compete in the circuit. So here I would, I would, um, that would be my suggestion. And I think there's nothing, I, I think it's absolutely okay for me to have a suggestion like that. But also I understand the amount of depth and wide range of technique he has just because on the circuit, we've just seen the moves that he's done a little bit more often, um, in this very condensed amount of time. And we know that they haven't seen some of those moves the way Ding has. So I would hope that with those moves, he's able to verify them or like make, provide more variety with it in order to sh keep showcasing Sala Hasala, but a more refined and a more refined version of him. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope I was helpful in some way. Like I said in the intro, if you want to see any more Street Dance China Season 6, I have the full episodes completely reacted to and analyzed on Patreon in a really easy place to look in a collection I have there. If you also want to see K-pop content, dance content, Patreon requested exclusive content. All of that is there for you to glean and enjoy. Um, but if you are okay with waiting on YouTube, that is okay as well. But I will say with this season in particular, I cannot guarantee that all of my personal favorites at least will make their way to YouTube. We will see. But I am Jess and I will catch you on the flip side. Bye.